Hello everyone, welcome to ACCAP6 lectures. We are at Corporation Tax. Now, if you could please move to chapter number 24 of your P6 lecture notes, page number 83 of your P6 notes. I won't be sharing the screen with you because we'll be doing a few questions in this video lecture, a few parts of the questions. So uh, I won't be sharing the screen with you. So you should keep your BBP exam in front of you and you should keep your notes in front of you as well. It's uh, chapter number 24, page number 83 of uh, BBP exam kit. It's uh, additional aspects of corporation tax. Right, so first of all, it says uh, goodwill, amortization of goodwill. Now, whenever it, uh, there is the amortization of goodwill, it's exactly like depreciation, right? Now, depreciation is on uh, tangible assets, whereas amortization on the intangible assets. So, whenever there is an amortization on the goodwill, we'll have to add that back, right? Now, it says amortization of goodwill is not an allowable, allowable expense. If a company has deductible amortization for goodwill, then it must be added back in the calculate in calculating the company's profits. It's chapter number twenty-four. If you're still if you still couldn't find it. Chapter 24 of P6, Lecture Notes, page 83. Now, uh, whenever we have sold, uh, have sold a goodwill, now we might make a gain on that or we, might made, uh, we, or we might make a loss on that, right? Depending on what the cost was of that goodwill. Now, whenever if it is a profit, say for example, it will be taxable under trading profits. And whenever it is a loss, it will be trading loss, so it will be set off against uh, against the uh, income now uh, it will not be a capital uh, it will not be a capital gain so there won't be any capital gains tax on that so that's what it says capital gain uh, sorry gains and losses arising from the goodwill are recognized for tax purposes as uh, on the same basis as they're recognized in the accounts so profit and uh, profit and loss on the sales so it will take sales proceeds of the asset less cost of it uh, which means that it will be taxed in trading income instead of, instead of the capital gains and like I said, that whenever it is a loss, then we'll set off against current period profits. Yeah, sorry, current period trading, uh, current period uh, trading income. And if uh, uh, if anything is left, then we will carry it forward in the future. Uh, after that, it says the patent box. Now, uh, of course, you know that uh, every government, uh, be it UK government or United States government, every government encourages individuals to do to do the businesses. Now, in the UK, UK government says whenever you are doing a business and you are doing a business of a kind where you are using your patents, so you are using unique ideas and unique, uh, you know, formulas to make the products and then you have registered that patent as well. Now, patent is simply a formula uh, or a idea which you have registered, right? And uh, it could be a process, it could be a technical thing, all right? So it could be, uh, you know, anything. So whenever you have registered a patent and you are using that patent to use, uh, to, to, you're using that patent to, pr to produce the goods and services, now if you have registered that patent, whatever the profits on them patents are, that will be at the re that will be taxed at the reduced rate of corporation tax. Now why is the government doing that in order for the small businesses to uh, go out and uh, start the uh, start the new businesses look for new ideas and uh, register and exploit the patents and register that as well all right so that's the benefit of for the government because obviously if the government is if the you know small businesses are registering the patents they are uh, you know they are looking for the unique ideas and formulas and of course that, that's good for uk and uh, they'll be creating jobs as well and they'll be paying the corporation tax Right, so that's why uh, a new scheme. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not uh, new uh, any longer. It's, it was old scheme. So uh, I've written it long. I've written it long ago. So, uh, anyways, a, a scheme has been introduced in relation to the patent profits in order to encourage companies to develop and exploit patents. The broad effect of the scheme is to tax profits arising on, in respect of the patents at a lower rate of, of corporation tax. Now, this scheme is available to companies that carry on qualifying developments in relation to the patent and is optional, so which means you will have to claim it. Uh, the scheme applies to all profits relating to exploitation of patents 
uh, patents and royalty income arising directly from them patents. So whenever I'm using that patent uh, in order uh, in the production of uh, in the production of goods or services, so whatever profit is apportioned to the patents, I will have to pay t reduced rate of tax on them uh, on them profits. Not only that, uh, if I am uh, say for example, if I have given them uh, rights, if I, if I have given the rights to use them pa patents to someone else. Now, uh, our profit arising on that as well will be taxed at the, rate, at the reduced rate of corporation tax. Right? So, say for example, a uh, formula of Coca Cola. So, they have registered their patents and they are letting others use that patent as well and they are earning in the form of, uh, in the form of royalty. So, uh, you know, and that, will be also, uh, that will also come under the patent box. Right? <coughs> so, it says uh, the scheme is available to companies that are qualifying, uh, so that carry on qualifying development in, re in relation to the patent and is optional. So in the question it will tell you that if it is a qualifying, uh, qualifying operation for the patent purposes or not. The scheme applies to all profits relating to exploitation of patents and royalty income arising directly from the patents. It also applies to proportion of the profits on sale of the products where patent has been exploited within the production process. Now, in current tax year, financial year 17, the effective rate on the patent profits is 10%. So all of the patent profits are taxed at effective rate of 10%. Now, <clears throat> effective rate of 10% means that whatever the, uh, I mean, in the exam, um, examiner will tell you that uh, this is the proportion of the patent profits. So you simply have to apply 10% on that. And rest of the profits, whatever the rest of the trading profit is, you will have to apply the standard rate of 19% of corporation tax. All right. So that's the simplest way to do that. However, what the examiner will give you in the in the tax rates section, examiner will give you this formula in the uh, tax rate section. Now, if you look at the tax table and tax rates, this formula will be given to you. So it says net patent profits times uh, main rate less 10% over main rate. The main rate of corporation tax is 19%, and net patent profit means that we will take the uh, you know the net patent sales and we'll have to deduct the relevant cost to that. However, this will be given to you exactly in this form. You will not have to calculate the net patent profit. So you will just simply take the net patent profits, multiply by main rate 19% less 10% over 19%. Uh, so basically, it's going to be uh, 0 0.09 over 0.19, right? So if you multiply by a, you know, net patent profits, so that will be our patent box. And please remember, it will be a deduction. Now, when you're using this formula, what we will do, we will take other profits, whatever the other profits are, then we will add patent profits, total amount of patent profits. So first we'll take total amount of other profit, then we'll take total amount of patent profit, then we will deduct, we'll make a deduction make a deduction with the help of this formula. So whatever this figure comes with, this, with the help of this formula, we'll make a deduction of that. And whatever the remaining amount is, we will apply this 19% corporation tax rate. So which will eventually mean that uh, these profits are being taxed at the rate of, effective rate of 10%. Right? Now I've listed an example here, if you want to do this example in both ways. So first you will do in the way I told you. So you will simply apply 10% on the patent profits and 19% on the other profits. Let's see how much is the tax liability, corporation tax liability. Then you will do in the method which is given to you in the, in the, uh, in the exam. So examiner will give you this formula. So if you apply that formula, then it will be exactly the same. The result will be exactly the same. Anyway, so uh, if you read the question, it says Delta PLC has net patent profits uh, of 50, uh, sorry, 500,000 pounds and other trading profits uh, of 2 million pounds. The requirement is calculate corporation tax of Delta PLC. Now, as I said, you will have to do it in both ways. So first you will do uh, in the way I told you, so 10% of patent profits, uh, you will take 10%, uh, you will apply 10% rate of corporation tax on the patent profits and 19% uh, on the remaining amount, right? Now, if I, uh, take 10% of, uh, so that is the patent profits, so 500,000 pounds times 10%, so that is how much? 50,000 pounds. And if I take 2 million, so 2 million, sorry, how many? Yeah, 
times uh, 19 percent is the corporation tax rate so how much will be 19 380 380 right so if I total that it would be 430,000 right so that would be 430,000 pounds that is the corporation tax corporation tax uh, liability right now that's how uh, uh, that's the method which I told you the effective rate of interest as our effective rate of corporation tax of 10% on the patent profits and other trading profit the rate of 19% right so that is the patent profit patent profit and whereas this one is the other trading profit other trading profit right so we'll apply 19% of that and 10% of that so that is our corporation tax liability with the help of this simple formula now if you attempt the same example with the help of this formula uh, this liability will came will come exactly this same liability will come so how we will take uh, uh, you know the again patent profits we will uh, take the patent profits of 50000 uh, 500000 pounds then we'll take other trading profits of uh, 2 million pounds let me do that here as well if you want to do it yourself just pause the video and do it yourself please so patent profits patent profits so these are 500,000 pounds then other trading profits so that would be other trading profits and it's 2 million pounds so it would be how much? 2.5 million pounds and uh, now we'll have to do the patent box patent box now how will how would we do the patent box we'll have to apply the same formula which is given here so net net patent profits which are in this case 500,000 pounds so 500,000 pounds times main rate of corporation tax which is uh, 0 0.19 less 0 0.09 over 0 0.19 so uh, this is 0 0.19 is 19 percent so 19 percent less 9 percent <coughs> sorry 19 percent less 10 percent uh, 10 percent it would be 0 0.10 so 0 0.19 less 0 0.10 over 0. 1, 9. So whatever this figure is, uh, we will deduct this amount out of this, and whatever the remaining amount is, we will have to apply corporation tax at the rate of 19% on that, uh, which would give me 430,000 pounds, hopefully. Right? Now let me do it on the calculator as well, just to make sure. Right, so we will take uh, uh, 500,000 pounds. Just pay me one second, my lazy calculator. So 500,000 uh, pounds times, uh, it would be 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.19. So that's uh, 236,842. So two, sorry, 236,842. If I deduct that amount out of 2,500,000 £2 pounds, 2.5 million, that would come to 2263158. If I apply 19% on that, that gives me 430,000 pounds. Right? I hope you got it. So basically this formula will be given to you in the exam but uh, uh, the way how we calculate it is with the help of this formula so basically this is a deduction so take patent profits we'll take other profits as well then we'll deduct patent box with the help of this formula so we'll make a deduction 
and whatever the remaining amount is, normal corporation tax will be applied. However, you can prove this exact same thing with the help of this formula as well. So, uh, patent profits at the rate of 10% and uh, other trading profits uh, at the rate of 19%. Whenever you are given this question in the exam, please make sure you do it in both ways. Uh, you do it in this way as well. So first you will do it in this way because this, this formula will be given to you in the exam anyway. So you must do this way, then you will explain this thing. Uh, uh, you must check this thing with, the, uh, with this formula as well. So you'll apply 10% and 19% on that. So both answers must be same. So if both answers are same, then you have done, done it right. If uh, both are not same, then you might have done some mistake. And even if you spot any mistake, do not spend much time in the exam. Just move on. All right, so just check a couple of times. If it's fine, that's fine. Otherwise, just move on. Coming back to our notes, page number 83, transfer pricing. Now, sometimes whenever there is a group, one company might be transferring uh, an asset to other company at a different price than the market value. So they might be giving at less than market value just to avoid taxes, all right? Now, they will be, uh, I mean, one company might be transferring a different rate, other company might be transferring a different rate. Now, in order to bring the uniformity, and uh, to, uh, to lessen the avoidance of tax, HMRC says that you can't do that. So there must be a specific transfer price, which would be market price. So let's see. Uh, the transfer pricing legislation restricts the freedom of group companies to buy and sell goods or services at whatever price. There is anti-avoidance legislation which requires the profit to be computed as if the transaction has been carried out at the arm's length and not the price actually used, all right? Now say uh, examiner could examine you, what is the transfer pricing for in, in the, group, uh, in the uh, group of companies? So then you will have to state this thing, all right? So examiner can ask in, uh, in a big, big question, say for example, 25 mark or 35 mark question, a small part will be on transfer pricing as well. Or there would be, examiner could not specifically ask about it, but uh, you might have to explain this issue as well whenever there are few companies in the group and they are transferring to each other, then you might have to explain this thing as well in your answer. Right, and just beneath that it says research and development relief. Research and development for SMEs, small and medium sized entities. Now research and development, every company in the UK and worldwide as well, that uh, every, com uh, sorry, not company, every government in the, uh, in the world encourage uh, the companies to do uh, research and development. Now, whenever you are doing research and development, it is good for the company. Obviously, you will invent few new things. You might come up with a new idea, or you might come up with a new product, new iPad in uh, a future year, or new Facebook maybe. All right. So that's why every uh, country encourage uh, its companies to spend uh, on the research and development. Now, what is the benefit if company is spending on research and development for the tax purposes? HM Revenue and Customs says that if you're a small company, uh, whenever you are deducting the research and development uh, cost, you don't only deduct the original cost, but you deduct extra 130% as well. Of course, you will deduct the original cost, then you will deduct extra 130% as well, which eventually means you will be deducting 230% of the cost. So 100% would be the value of the cost, I mean 100% would be the actual cost and you will be deducting extra 130% of the cost as well which means total amount would be 230%. So that's what it says. Research and development relief for SMEs is given by allowing the company to claim 230% of the expenditure as a deduction instead of the actual cost. Right, so instead of the actual cost it says 230% or you can say uh, actual cost plus extra 130%. It is exactly the same thing. If a company that qualifies for SME research and development relief makes a trade loss, a trading loss, it may claim a tax credit which will entitle it to an immediate repayment. That tax credit is 45, 14.5 percent of uh, of the lower of these two things. Now, if a company is in a profit, of course they would want to deduct the 230 percent out of the cost uh, of the of the revenues. However, if the company is already in the loss. If they, in, in, if they deduct 230% of the cost, it, will, it would increase the loss. And that would still be uh, okay if the company is expecting to have the profits in the future because these losses can be carried forward in the future. However, if the company is, has incurred a loss now and company is expecting to incur the loss in the future as well, which means we will not be able to claim this loss in the future as well. So we will not be able to set off the loss because we will not have any profit in the future. 
In that case, HMRC says, because you are struggling, then HMRC can pay you uh, the cash instead of the loss relief. Now, what would be the amount of the loss? Uh, what would be the amount of cash? So it would be 14.5% 14, 14 of the lower of the trading loss itself or 230% of the qualifying uh, research and development expenditure. So it will be lower of these two, but it will be 14.5%, all right? Uh, so you will have to see, especially when uh, uh, you see this question in the exam, uh, exam you will have to see, uh, read the question clearly, clearly if the examiner states that the uh, company is not expecting to have the profits in the future, then you might consider uh, claiming this, uh, you know, the tax credit of 14.5% because it would be beneficial. You will bring the cash, so you will be cash rich. However, if the company is expecting to have the profit in the future, then it's better to just deduct 230% uh, of the cost. All right. Uh, right then. So let's uh, let's see a question. The past exam question. It's. Uh, if you open your BBB exam kit, come to question number 22. Question number 22 of BBB exam kit, please. As I said earlier as well, I won't be sharing the I won't be sharing the question with you through the screen share option. Question 22, part B. Right, so it's uh, page number 33 of your BBB exam kit. It's Kurt Limited, K U R T. And question name is Sank Limited and Kurt Limited. It was examined in June 2012. So if you have any other exam kit, please find this question. Sank Limited and Kurt Limited examined in June 2012. And we're only doing part B of it. And it was uh, it's for BBP exam kit, current version, page number 33. It's eight, worth, eight marks worth of this question. Uh, so it says the court limited was incorporated and began trading on 1st of August 2017. Before reading the question, let's read the requirement. Sorry. In relation to the court limited, explain the tax deduction and uh, credits available in the period ending 31st of March 2018. In respect of the expenditure on machinery and scientific research, and comment on any choice available uh, to the company. Now, Kurt Limited was incorporated and began trading and uh, began trade on 1st of August 2017. Now, it began trade on 1st of August 2017 and year ended 31st of March 2018. So, how long is its accounting period? So, from August till March, August, September, October, November, December, Jan, Feb, March. Is it uh, eight months? Uh, August, September, October, November, December, Jan, Feb, March. So, yeah, five and three, eight months. So its accounting period is eight months long. So you will have to uh, you will have to uh, remember it. Now is owned by Mr. Quinn, who also owns other three uh, trading companies. So th this company is owned by Mr. Quinn, and uh, he also owns other three companies as well. So it is a group basically. So group of four companies, you can say. Now has made a tax adjusted trading loss in the eight months ending 31st of March 2018. So it has a trading loss has no other income or chargeable gains in the eight months uh, ending 31st of March 2018, is expected to be profitable in the future years, so it's expected to be profitable in the future years, is a small enterprise for the purpose of research and development. Now, expenditure in the uh, period ending 31st of March 2018, so these are the expenditures. Now it says uh, uh, machinery for use in, uh, in its manufacturing activities, 210,000 pounds. So this is the machinery used in the manufacturing activities. Now, uh, what, why is this information given to us? Could you please remember? Could you please remember what, what we have to do with the machinery? If you remember the capital allowance. So say for example, if you have to give the capital allowance on that, what would be the capital allowance? Could you please tell me? Annual investment allowance. Could you remember annual investment allowance? Annual investment allowance of 200,000 pounds, right? Spend on the machinery. So it will be eligible for annual investment allowance of 200,000 pounds. But annual investment allowance of 200,000 pounds was for whole year. Uh, so it was for whole year. But uh, this accounting period is only eight months long. So 200,000 times eight over 12. So we'll have to deduct. Uh, uh, we'll have to deduct this amount out of 210,000 pounds, right? So its value is 210,000 pounds less uh, annual investment allowance and annual investment allowance would be 200,000 pounds for the whole year for eight months whatever this amount is that will be deducted out of that 
Now, whatever the remaining amount of machinery is after deduction of the annual, annual investment allowance, then that will be uh, eligible for the writing down allowance as well. All right? Then we will have to apply the writing down allowance in the main pool. Right, so that's how we'll calculate the capital allowance on that. Right, then after that it says, uh, yeah, of course, and if the capital allowance is deducted out of the, uh, out of the trading profits, it would uh, reduce the trading profits. However, if the company is already in the loss, it would increase the loss. All right. Now, this company is expected to have the profits in the future, so it's, it's okay to have the losses now because we can set up the losses in the future periods anyway. Then it says the uh, cost of staff carrying out qualifying research, uh, scientific research in connection with its business of 28,000 pounds. So basically this is a research and development cost of 28,000 pounds. Now uh, th there are two things available to us, two choices to us. We can either deduct 230,000 pounds of uh, the cost, so cost is 28,000 pounds. So we can deduct 230,000 pounds of this cost because it is a a small company, small and medium sized company, so we can deduct 230,000 pounds of the cost. And other option available to us is uh, of the 14.5% uh, cash amount, uh, repayment from HM Revenue Customs, and it would be lower of the loss itself. So, loss amount is not given to us in the question, is it? So, it would be lower of uh, loss amount and research and development expenditure, which would be 230% uh, of the 28,000 pounds. So it would be lower of these two, right? However, because uh, uh, we are expected to have the profits in the future years, so it's okay to deduct this 230,000 pounds out of the trading losses. So it would eventually increase the loss further, but it's okay because in the future years, we're expecting to have the profits. If we would not have expected to have the profit in the future year, then it was okay to receive the cash from HM Revenue Customs because we will not have profit in the future anyway. So it's, uh, it's uh, you know, our carrying forward the losses, it's useless, right? So that's how we will calculate this question. Right, uh, then, if you come back to our, if we come back to our lecture notes, coming back to the lecture notes, please. Right then, uh, on page number 83, last topic on page number 83, research and development for large companies. Now, large companies get what is known as uh, uh, above the line tax credit. Now, if you read this, uh, it, it says that you will get 11% relief for the large companies if you have spent on uh, research and development. But the relief for the large companies is different than SMEs. For the large companies, what we do is relief um, uh, percentage is 11% of the expenses. 11% of the expenses which you have spent on research and development. So how, would you, it, uh, uh, how does it work? So what first we will do is, and what we will do is we'll take a uh, amount of takings, so amount of total income, then we'll uh, add 11% of the expenses, 11% uh, of the expenses towards the income, so which would eventually increase the amount of income. Then we will have to calculate normal tax liability on that. So whatever the tax liability would be, then we will deduct the exact 11% which we have already earlier calculated out of the total liability, which would eventually reduce the tax liability. All right. So uh, I hope that you got it. I would again repeat it. First, you will take the actual amount of takings, actual amount of income. Then we will take how much have you spent on expenses on research and development. We will take 11% of that. That would also be considered as income, so which would eventually increase the income, uh, right? So there will be uh, more income. And then after that, we will calculate the normal corporation tax liability at the rate of 19%. So, which would give me the 19, uh, which would give me the uh, corporation tax liability. Out of that corporation tax liability, I would reduce, uh, you know, the 11% of the cost of the research and development expenditure, which I have added earlier. So, I will deduct it out of the corporation tax liability, which would eventually reduce my corporation tax liability. All right, so that's how it works. Right, so that's what it says here as well in the notes. And this is known as above the line tax credit, please. So sometimes the examiner might ask you that uh, what is above the line tax credit for the large companies for the research and development expenditure, then you must, you must explain this. So research and development relief for the large companies is given as tax credit of 11% of the expenditure as a deduction from corporation tax liability. So as a deduction from the corporation tax liability, it will be deducted out of the corporation tax liability. 
First, the 11% tax credit is treated as income to increase a, a company's corporation tax liability. Then the 11% tax credit is deducted from the total corporation tax to reduce the corpor company's uh, corporation tax liability. All right. Right then, so if you come to the next page, page number 84, please. Uh, enhanced capital uh, allowances. Expenditure on an uh, energy saving or water saving plant machinery qualifies for 100% enhanced capital allowances. If a company incurs a loss, it can claim what is known as first year tax credit. Now, that is an uh, enhanced capital allowance, so capital allowance reduces the trading, trading profits. However if, however, if it is a, already a loss, then of course it would increase the loss. Now, if the company wants, they can uh, claim the cash amount from the HM Revenue Customs. So, how does it work? So, if the company incurs a loss, it can claim what is known as first year tax credit, where the company can surrender where the company can surrender uh, tax losses attributable to the ECAs, uh, enhanced capital loans for the cash payment instead of 100% ECA. So, you will not get 100% enhanced capital loans but you will get cash payment and how would we uh, how would we get the enhanced capital allowance anyway so if you have uh, any if you have spent any expenditure on the energy saving or water saving plant and machinery so you will get 100% ECA right so how does it work first year tax credit is 19% of the loss rendered to the subject to the maximum of so whatever is loss attributable to the ECA so we'll take 19% of that and but it will be a maximum of a total a pay and NIC for the period of loss and 250,000 pounds it would be higher of these two that is maximum we can get right on page number 84 again personal liability of senior accounting officer of large company I was just looking at the question which you have to do after that. Right, so uh, personal accountability of a senior accounting officer of large company. If a company has turnover of 200 million pounds or balance sheet total of 2 billion pounds, uh, then the company's senior accounting officer is personally responsible for the maintenance of the financial statements and the tax liability of the company. If he doesn't do so, there will be a penalty of 5,000 pounds. The company must notify HMRC who is a responsible person. Identify the senior accounting officer of the company. After that, it says a group payment arrangement. So, if there are a group of companies and everybody is paying the corporation tax liability, they must, I mean, they can appoint one single person to pay the liability for all of them. So, that is a group payment arrangements. After that, it says management expenses of the investment company. So, investment companies, say, for example, we have an estate, uh, 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 you know, the property company, estate agency in which we are dealing with the property, we are buying and selling the property. So our main expenses would not be any, anything other than the, you know, the staff which is sitting in our office, our marketing people who are dealing with that, and our admin officer. All right, so in that case, what would be the treatment? So they say that, that expen them expenses can be deducted. All right, so in, uh, it says the uh, investment company is a company whose business wholly consist wholly or partly in making investments. The principal overhead of the investment company will be the cost of running the business which is called management expenses. These are generally deductible expenses in computing taxable profits as unrelieved and unrelieved excess of such expenses in one accounting period can, can be carried forward in the future periods uh, as management expenses of the following accounting period and if still unrelieved the future accounting periods. So corporation tax is applied on companies in investment in the normal way. right? Right, so that's it for our this video lecture, I guess. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's it. Now let me do a few. Uh, let me give you a few questions which you have to do in your spare time. First, if you could uh, come to page number, uh, sorry, question number thirty-two of BPP exam kit, part A. Question thirty-two, part A.
question 32. Now question 32 is a Drake Limited, Gosling PLC and Merrill Limited. It's a practice practice question from the BPP, BPP exam kit. It, uh, I hope it won't be in the, any other exam kits. It's a BPP uh, question. Question 32, part A. Right, so in part A it says, explain the tax, explain the tax treatment of Goodwill while owned by Drake Limited and on sale. Drake Limited acquired the assets of the business of another company including, including Goodwill on 1st of September 2018 will amortize the goodwill in the company's accounts, may sell the goodwill in a few years time. So what would be the treatment? We have just studied about goodwill that uh, whenever, uh, I mean, when he owned that goodwill, so of course he would be amortizing as he said in the question. So that amortization will be added back because it is not an allowable expense. Now when he sells the, that goodwill, now whatever, uh, you know, the profit made on that, so we'll take uh, uh, in the sales proceeds, then we will need a cost out of that. Whatever the uh, profit is, uh, whatever the profit is, that is subject to the trading profits. And say, for example, if there is a loss, so you know, that will be set off against other uh, against the trading profits of the current period. If anything is left, then we will set off against the future periods. Now, there won't be any capital gains tax on that because uh, uh, it is subject to the trading profits. All right. So that would be the answer. Uh, as if uh, I mean, it is exactly the same thing which we have just seen in our uh, lecture notes. Right. Let's do another question as well. It's uh, question 26, part B. Question number 26, part B. Question 26, name is uh, Bond Limited Group, examined in uh, December 2014. And we're going to do which part? Part B, I think. Yep. Part B required, it says, uh, Ongo Limited patent box regime. Now, in Part B it says, state giving reasons whether or not patent box regime is available to Ongo Limited and briefly describe the operation of the regime. Now, <clears throat> the trader of the Ongo Limited consists of baking high quality cakes. Uh, Ongo Limited trades from premises purchased on 1st of July 2017 for 310,000 pounds. Ongo Limited also develops new baking processes and techniques. Now, this information is very, very important. The Ongo Limited also develops new baking processes and techniques which it has patented. Uh, it uses these processes and uh, uh, techniques itself and licenses the patents to other manufacturers as well. Right, so this information is very, very important. Uh, why it is important? Because it is developing, uh, it is using the new, it develops new baking processes and techniques and it has patented it as well. So, uh, you know, the patent box, patent box regime would apply on that uh, because it uses, uh, you know, the new, uh, it, it uses the new techniques and uh, it has developed the uh, new baking processes and techniques. So its profit would be subject to the reduced rate uh, and effective rate would be uh, 10%, all right? And uh, not only, uh, there are two types of income. So what would be, uh, I mean, first would be the one that we are using our patents to produce the, uh, uh, you know, the baking cakes, he says. I think it's, yeah, it's baking the cakes. So what first one would be the one that we are using these patents to produce, uh, to manufacture the cakes. So first income would be that one, which, which would be subject to the reduced rate of patent, a reduced rate of corporation tax of 10%. And the other income would be when he uh, gives the license to use uh, these patents to others. So royalty income coming from them will also be subject to the reduced rate of operation tax because that would also be subject to the patent box regime. All right, so that's it for uh, this requirement. Right? Right then, so that's it for our this video. I think uh, uh, I haven't got anything else for you. Question 22, we have done that. Now, if you could come to have we done question 22B, have we? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. Right, so what, what's your homework is? You have to do all of these questions which we have, uh, which we have done in this video. So I, I want you to note down please. Question 22 part B. Uh, question 26 part B. Question 32 part A. And last one which we haven't done but that's your homework as well. Question 34 part B. Both part B1 and part, part B2. Right, so question 22 part B is on research and development of small company. And then question 26B is on uh, patent box. Question 32A is on the goodwill. And the question uh, 34B, I don't know what is it on, let me see. Question 34B as well, you have to do. Question 34B, let me see. Uh, question 34. Right, so yeah, you have to determine that if this company is resident in the UK or not, and assuming if it is resident, uh, if it is a uh, resident in the UK, uh, what would be the implications uh, on, on the corporation tax liability? Explain with supporting calculation UK corporation tax liability of Cross Limited uh, on the assumption that it is resident in the UK and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of making the election to exempt its overseas profits from the UK. All right. So uh, question number thirty-four as well, part B. It's Spets Limited Group. It was examined in two twelve two thousand. Uh, 13 December 2013 right so that's it for our this video lecture I will see you in the next video lecture and uh, probably next or even the one after that would be our last video lecture for our piece uh, you know the corporation tax I will see you in the next video lecture then goodbye